After seven years of school, I graduated with my doctorate in physical therapy. And since then, I've helped countless hoopers decrease and eliminate their knee pain while jumping. And if you're a hooper that experiences knee pain while jumping, then look no further. Because in this video, I'm gonna share with you the five golden pieces of information, don't know really how to draw gold, so I just made money bags, that I've used with the hoopers that I've worked with to completely get rid of their knee pain in two weeks or less. So if you use these five things, you're gonna be out of pain. By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly what you need to be doing to make that happen. And by the way, I have a full training system called the good drill system. We don't just look at pain, we look at the whole basketball athlete from skill development, athletic development, but also we address pain and it'll get you jumping higher, get you insanely skilled, help you dominate in games, get you out of pain, all of that. So there's really nothing else like it on the planet. Go to the link in my description if you're interested in any or all of those things. But without further ado, let's get to it. So say your training consists of jumping on the court, skill work, lifting in the weight room, and other things included. Find all the things that you can't do unless there's an insane amount of pain, cut those things and just do them to your tolerance. So for example, say you jump 20 minutes a day, every single day, full max approach jumps, and after 10 minutes of max approach jumps, you start experiencing your pain, then cut it. Do only 10 minutes and slowly build it up from there. If you jump as hard as you possibly can, and every single time you do that, regardless of how much time you spend, you experience pain, then stop jumping as hard as you possibly can. Jump lightly, but continue to do the work. But if you do max approach jumps uh, and it constantly gives you pain regardless of how long you've been jumping for, then don't jump as hard as you possibly can. Don't jump maximally, just jump lighter and you're gonna slowly build it up over time. So that first principle, it's pretty simple to understand, but you have to apply it to what you're currently doing. So first thing, we could X that off the list, get your money up. Now let's move on to number two. The second money bag, which is isometrics. One example of an isometric is literally just a wall sit. In any isometric you do, the whole purpose of it is that you're not moving. That's the definition of an isometric. You're literally just not moving. But there is work being done. Me holding myself up here, this is taking some work. But you don't want to experience pain here. If you have knee pain while you do anything that you're doing, you're trying to find a position that's not giving you any problems. You're holding it for 45 seconds. I don't need any weight for this. I don't need anything for this. I'm holding it for 45 seconds. I'm going to do five sets of this and I'm going to do it three times a day, every single day. What's the purpose of this? If you do isometrics consistently every single day, when you go back to higher intensity work, like max effort jumping, your knee is not going to be shocked. It's not going to give you a pain response or as big of a pain response because you've been putting in work to your knee over a period of time. So your knee is not going to give you as many problems when you start putting in higher intensity work, like jumping. It makes sense. You're just increasing your baseline of tolerance. So number two, isometric done wall sits three times a day five sets each 45 seconds each set no pain now let's go on to the third one the third money bag for getting you out of your knee pain while jumping is isotonics let's go through it so what are isotonics isometrics are when you stay still in a position you're literally not moving but isotonics are the exact opposite you are moving throughout a range of motion. So an example of isotonics are just squatting, regular squats where you go down and up. Now, this can cause some people pain. So what I want you to do is get back in that wall sit position where you could hang onto the wall and I literally just want you going down and up in a way, in a range of motion and in a way that's not giving you pain. Say my right side hurts, you can bias one side at a time. So I, I can hang onto the wall, I'm biasing one side and I'm using as much weight as possible on the side that's actually hurting. I'm moving this through a full range of motion without pain. So I'm here, biasing aside, biasing aside, biasing aside. Perfect. That might be super easy for you. Not a lot of load on this side, no pain at all. If that's the case, I want you moving into a split squat. Now with the split squat, you're gonna keep your knee over your ankle. I don't want it pushing forward for now. See how that feels. I go down, I go up, I go down, I go up that doesn't give you any pain, then you could just do a regular split squat where your knee is going over your toe. How often do I want you doing this? I want you doing one set of this after your isometric. So you're doing your five sets of isometrics three times a day. So it's five sets of isometrics, then one set of isotonics. So five sets of isometrics, one set of isotonics, three times a day. For the isotonics, I want you getting eight reps, no pain. So again, 
You have three options here. So your first option is just a regular squat. I could bias the side on this if you need to. Your second option is a split squat where the knee stays over the ankle. And then your third option is a regular split squat where your knee can go past your ankle. Again, no pain, eight reps. Okay, third thing, isotonics done you're well on your way now let's move on to number four the fourth money bag we're getting you rich with all these money bags is landing so let's work on landing so if i'm gonna jump a certain height and i'm gonna put a lot of force into the ground when i'm trying to jump really high i have to be able to land from that force so a lot of people they'll jump really high they'll land and their knee hurts from that so how can we progress this in a way where it's not going to give you pain well you just start by landing so you can start with a whatever, 16 to 20 inch box or surface, you're literally just gonna land off of it, see how you feel, land on two legs, it doesn't have to be crazy. If that feels fine, you can increase the height of the box over time, so one day, say you do 16 inches on a box, land off two legs, if that feels fine. The next day, I can do the same box, but I can land on one leg. See how that feels over time. If that feels fine, I can increase the height of the box. And your goal should be to get to a height that's like closer resembles the height that you're gonna land from with your max vertical jump. So if you could jump 35 inches in the air, but you get pain when you land from a 30 inch box, it's probably gonna be problems, right? So you have to progress this over time. The goal is to land from a height that resembles the height you're gonna be jumping in an actual game when you're competing. So what should you do for landing? Again, so I want you to do this two to three times per week, no pain at all, and I want you to do it for time. So do it for five minutes where you're landing on two legs, landing on one leg, but just keep it really, really simple so that you could measure over time. That's a huge point gonna get into that point next but if you make it too complex when it comes to pain you're not gonna be able to measure your progress too objectively so keep it simple land on two legs land on one leg keep track of the heights that you're able to land from without pain and keep getting better over time all right number four check now let's get really wealthy with number five and we're gonna keep it rolling for number five number five is simply to monitor yourself. Like I was just talking about with your landing, I want you to monitor yourself while you do all of these activities. So while you do the things that you actually wanna get back to, while you do your isometrics, while you do your isotonics, while you do your landing, monitor measure keep track in the notes section of your phone make sure you see progress if you see that progress on your phone of like wow i was able to hold this isometric for 45 seconds at this position and now i could get down to this position and you know that your knee pain is getting better that's only giving you confidence so monitoring is very important when it comes to getting back to your old self your old pain-free self so monitoring let's get that checked off the list done do those five things, you're gonna decrease your pain, maybe even eliminate it in two weeks time, and you're gonna thank me later. So definitely do those things, monitor your progress, you'll get better. Again, good drill system. I mentioned in the, earlier in this video, if you're a hooper that wants to jump higher, dunk, dominate in games, score more, do all that pain-free, then you need to check out the Good Drill system. It's something I've created that has helped thousands of hoopers all over the world, and it is way too valuable for me not to share it. So go to the link in the description of this video, check it out, there's nothing else like it on the planet, and that's it, okay? Like, subscribe, I'll see you in the next one.